And at no point in time, there should be a crossing line between what the political administration is supposed to be doing versus what administration is supposed to be doing. There's going to be a problem because this is a disciplinary matter. Bless up, bless up my people. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl, Anisabel Rose. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Thanks for the returning subscribers. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn the post notification bell on. Put it on all so you won't miss an upload from me. On the road to 20k help to get there my people so in this one my people we see in the jamaica civil service association comes out strongly against juliet bullets for reprimanding miss valerie curtis clerk of the house as well as shireen golden campbell says that the speaker is treating the auditor general's report within the law while j amp is saying if she's treating it within the law then they're urging the old speaker to share the legal advice from the attorneys general on report tabling. Stay tuned for the details at hand. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Run over to my other platform. Subscribe over there. Get that channel to 1K for me, please and thanks. Some of people, this back and forth with the Auditor General's Department and the Parliament is not going to be over anytime soon. And right now, my people, the country needs clarity as it pertains to, you know, tabling of the Auditor General's report. But before we get into that, my people, we've seen recently where the House Speaker has reprimanded the Clerk of the parliament saying that she brought parliament in disrepute and this is miss valerie curtis and so right now my people in support of miss valerie curtis we're seeing the jamaica civil service association president coming out strong saying that juliet Olness is wrong so following the house speaker juliet Olness letter to the clerk of the house of parliament valerie curtis accusing her of dereliction of duty regarding the handling of Auditor General's report, Juliet Holness is coming on as some serious fire as it pertains to that, my people. The letter was also copied to the Director of Human Resources Management and all MPs. But President of the Jamaica Civil Service Association, Tisha Clark Griffith, says the House Speaker crossed the line by meddling in administrative matters and says that the letter of reprimand from Mrs. Olin should not be placed on the file of the clerk, Mrs. Valerie Curtis. The politicians doesn't understand that there is a clear dichotomy between politics and administration and that the politicians are not permitted to write to any person in administration about any particular matter, especially a matter of discipline. There's a breach of process and that should have been channeled to the respective minister in the respective ministry so that that can be channeled to the permanent secretary and down to the officer. And at no point in time, there should be a crossing line between what the political administration is supposed to be doing versus what administration is supposed to be doing. There's going to be a problem because this is a disciplinary matter that was not even aired. I mean, the person doesn't get an opportunity to speak about it or to offer a response. A letter of reprimand of this nature would have to come at the end of a hearing after hearing both sides of what happened. Not that you just go ahead and write to somebody like that. There's a process in dealing with these type of matters, and this is not the process to deal with it, right? It cannot go on the file. cannot. It should not go on the file because it is not channeled through the proper process, and we need to educate ourselves as to what the proper process should be. So what are thing, my people? Juliet Olness come out strong reprimanding Miss Curtis, and it's not her duty to do so and the civil service association is letting her know that she is wrong for doing so and in this segment we've seen government senator shereen golden campbell backing juliet only saying that the house speaker is on sound legal ground in her treatment of reports from the auditor general's department Mrs. Holness has ruled that the reports were not submitted under the correct legislation. And we see the opposition People's National Party has been critical of the Speaker's handling of the reports. 
And so right now, Shereen Golin Campbell is saying that the opposition must explain the legal basis of their challenge to the Speaker's ruling. We're going out in the public domain and throwing words about suppression mm. and blah, 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 when the law is clear and the Speaker has a duty to follow the law. In my estimation, in relation to these reports, which I understand to be public body reports mm. of the two entities, it was not an she is correct in my legal opinion. Just like I read the law, the, the, the opposition has attorneys over there who can read the law too. Mm. And I have not heard anyone come up and say that the speaker's interpretation is wrong because section blah blah of this <laughs> says she's wrong. Nobody has quoted anything or, or, or given any evidence from the statutes and the constitution that we have to say she's wrong. If they do, I'm willing to debate that. On the other hand, we've seen the... Executive Director of JAMP, that's Jamaica Accountability Meetup Portal, is calling on the House Speaker Juliet Owens to share the opinion of the Attorney General on the issue of tabling of reports from the Auditor General. Seeing that, my people, you have one side saying that she is acting within the law, and then we have another side saying that, you know, it's not her duty to do so and so as it pertains to Miss Curtis. And so it's fair enough, and I agree with the JAMP executive director, Miss Calder, calling for clarity, so to speak, reveal what the attorney general has said as it pertains to the tabling of report. Because this back and forth, sending back reports after three months to the auditor general, and the auditor general sending back the same report, you know, is confusing the nation, so to speak. And if you have nothing to hide, if you are transparent, if you are standing as a person who is non-biased, non-partisan, then why not share this report on tabling of reports from the Attorney's General's office? Fear enough, my people, but I'm going to make hear what Miss Calder has to say. Today in November and in October, it didn't appear to the Speaker that the need to share the Attorney General's opinion was paramount. But I would imagine that at this point, I'm hoping that the Speaker is reconsidering that, as well as the government, since it has come down to a place where there are so many different voices contending. Jump has a different view as citizens, and as we have said, we're not swearing we're correct, but this is our view, and we're asking for correction. Speaker has, the opposition has, the media might have. We're asking again for the Speaker to share the opinion of the Attorney General with Jamaica so that we can be satisfied and so that we can be guided and so that we can be assured. That's the whole point of being transparent, you know, is to assure citizens that the decisions that you have taken as a government is actually, in fact, in their best interest. What is important now is that the Speaker comes back to the House and explain again why, despite what citizens say, and despite the Auditor General's refusal to follow her ruling, she is now going to give to us the benefit of the Attorney General's opinion. Because her words on that day, and I'll read it, the Speaker said, the opinion I formed was supported in every way by the Attorney General and the Parliamentary Legal Council. I recall the former Attorney General, Member Marlene Malahu Ford, standing to her feet to address the issue. And she made it so clear that she doesn't believe that every opinion from the AG's office is to be shared. But in these circumstances, it was her opinion mm -hmm. that it was best that it be shared. And I agree with Member Marlene Malahu for it. So you see my people, they're saying that she filed under the wrong Financial Administration and Audit Act. And Mrs. Monroe Ellis, that's the Auditor General, is firing back, contesting that to be a lie. So I want to hear from Uno, my people, what says Uno based on everything that was said in this video. Talk up my people, jump on the comments in the comment section and make a reason. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Run over to my other platform, Instagram and Facebook and follow me over there at Anissa Bell Rose. Check out the YouTube store, make a purchase, it goes in support of the channel. Check out the YouTube membership, you get a lot of benefits by becoming a member. We do notifications, shout out in each and every video to be a part of that. All you have to do is be the first to like, comment and subscribe and you'll be featured in the following video to come. This notification shout out goes to Evelyn Meikle. Big up yourself, Evelyn. Thanks for the continued support from each and every subscriber. New viewers, come on board, journey with me, join the family. Subscribe to the channel, like up the video, share out the videos. Support the ABR movement by playing your part. 
get this video to at least 2000 likes stay tuned for more videos stay tuned for more updates as we get the update them people know so we're gonna bring it so on a play phone apart big up on yourself have a blessed day